Good morning, everyone from Penzik War. Some of you have been wondering about my accommodations here, and so I thought we would do a, shall we say, cribs style tour. Let's go. So here it is, my the entrance to my little, what I call my travel pavilion. You might hear clanking about because people are arming up to go to the battlefield, and I will be going there shortly, but here is the lovely tapestry I bought specifically to decorate my pavilion. And it is seven feet tall or two meters 30 long, so it's a little too tall for my, my current pavilion height. This is my small pavilion, my large pavilion is currently in storage, sadly. This table is basically my organization point. You can see I've got various sorts of vessels for liquid. This is one of my particular favorites. A reproduction of a very famous piece you may recognize. This gorgeous decanter is an op a glass decanter with an optic twist, and you can see it still has some remnants of wine in it. I'm having a mate made for water so that I can properly mix my water and wine. This is an oil lamp that I completely failed to use the entirety of war. Next year, I swear to God, I'm actually going to use it. I bought the olive oil, I just never got around to actually setting it up. It's sort of my little plates and serving vessels area. There's butter in one of those and mustard in the other under that wax linen. Of course, my medieval trend, or my uh, my metal trencher there. Over here is my toiletries kit, and I always make a habit of decanting everything into nice period containers. We've got sunblock, we've got moisturizer, we have my toothpaste, facial wash, any kind of regular vitamins or pills I'm taking. I put a bunch of floss in there. And of course my comb, which actually does a really splendid job of getting gunk out of my hair. You use this side to detangle it, and then this side to actually remove detritus. And you can see the detritus that actually comes out from all the dust and fire smoke and whatnot. And in here I keep my facial cream so that it's hidden. And I'm not going to decant that because it contains really expensive actives that are uh, oxidative, will oxidize probably when it just poured into a regular container. So, Containers are always important. This is a bent wood box I bought this time. I haven't used it yet, but I'll figure out how to use it next year. These are my sewing things, my little sewing basket. Here is a um, pin, pin and needle book that one of my ladies in waiting very generously made for me. Very, very nifty, all organized with each page labeled. It even has a hair taping area. Belt area over here. Of course, I have lots of belts, and this isn't even all my belts, one's on my waist my iconographic henan, of course. One of the nice things about a hub and spoke pavilion is that one has a place to hang things. Oh God, look at the schmutz on that towel. That's the towel I use to wash my legs every night before getting in bed. Oof, I hope that comes out. Under this piece of silk damask is a chest. It's just a plain wooden chest and that's why I cover it with a beautiful fall of fabric. This is where I keep, this chest is the chest in which I keep my Florentine fashions all nice and neatly folded. In this chest hiding behind the sewing project, I swore I would finish this Penzik, ha ha ha. Anyway, in this chest is my Biancheria. So my linen under things, but also my stockings. And you can see that nice red pair of knit stockings right there. And of course, no Contessa buyer is complete without a silk canopy. This one is a suspended canopy and I made it specifically so that it would create a tent within a tent basically. So this is sort of a climate controlled interior space but also it keeps the light out. It is a proper suspended canopy which means every year I have to figure out how to suspend a rectangular shape from a round hub and spoke system. That's always exciting more of the suspension system here. And every year I swear I'm gonna take a picture um, and so that I can just use that to remind myself where I put everything, but whatever. And this is my rope bed. Under here is actually a straw mattress. I made a lovely ticking out of a heavy linen, and I'll take a video of that in a moment, and stuffed it with straw, and it makes for a very comfortable bed, and I love this bedspread. It is just gorgeous. Here's a glimpse under the sheets. So I also have a lovely feather duvet as a topper, feather mattress basically, which is documented absolutely in Lorenzo de Medici's 
um, inventory, and here is the straw mattress. And I can see the straw has really compacted. That's what I'm looking for. It's compacted over the course of the event, and I could have easily put in more and should have put in more, but I didn't. But you can see I just stuff it, roll it up on the ends, and if I'd wanted to be really fastidious, I could have sewn it shut, but I didn't feel like that. And it stayed. Being rolled prevented everything from coming out. So that is my mattress at Penzik, and you can see here is the rope bed, which I make every single year. It's a time cons little bit of a time-consuming process, but worth it if you're gonna be in one space for two weeks. These are lovely wool turkey rugs, as they're called in the Decameron. I love these. I sit on here and do my ablutions in the morning and in the evening. Here are my two different kinds of overshoes for protecting my shoes and our feet. The left are my pianelle, which are very interesting. I've got a whole video on that if you're interested. And my patents, well, these are my substitute patents since I couldn't find my patents before departing for here. So I bought these for Penzik. I keep my shoes in a perfectly neat, orderly fashion under the table, so they're out of the way. And then under the bed is a second chest, third chest, where I keep my uh, Franco, my Flemish fashions. And then I have a cooler and a second cooler. And one of those is a cold larder and one is a not chilled larder, basically. And that's great because they can stay hidden. And also the blankets provide extra insulation against the heat of the day. It is extremely dusty at gatherings like this. So here is a wash tub I have that I utilize both for uh, washing clothing, specifically biancheria, the underclothing, but also I use this to wash myself at night. So I pour some water in that hideously dirty towel that you saw over there. I use that to then scrub my legs and feet and other parts of my body before retiring for the evening. Well, this dress has a really sad story. You see, it's out here in quarantine because I was using the privies one night and as I stood up, and removed myself from the seat, I heard a horrible, horrible splish. And that was the back half of the dress ending up in the very disgusting privy. Yes, it was horrifying. Well, that's basically it. This is how I live for two weeks every year in August, well, July and August. What do you think? Do you have any questions about anything I didn't cover? How do you live when you're at a medievalist event? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, Stay creative and stay tuned for your moment of Kitty Zen.